Hey everybody, welcome to the Chile Kamanga Show and I hope you guys are good. First and foremost, I know I said I was not going to have a video. I was inspired this morning because I was trying to look for trending videos for my job. I came across a video by, um, what's this guy's name? Kenya Barris and Tyler Perry. He said two things first and foremost. The first one is that he doesn't listen to Rotten Tomato because that stuff is not important to him. It's really sad, man. It's a sad existence. It's not a, it's not a great life. But it seems like every time I do a project, the first thing I do after the project comes out is go to Rotten Tomatoes. But let me just tell you about them tomatoes. I don't fuck with them. You don't, don't fuck with tomatoes? I don't give a damn about a rotten or a fresh. None of that means shit to me. I definitely agree with, you know, what he meant behind that. I think Rotten Tomato has a problematic thing of choices in what they like and don't like. Not to say that Tyler Perry's films need a high rating, but I do believe that the reasons for their low rating are not proper. Here's the thing, Tyler Perry lived in a lot of our homes, right? I remember I came home early and watched Why Did I Get Married with my aunt and my sisters and stuff wanted to watch it and I watched it again, that's how much I liked the film. I immediately learned about Tyler Perry and him writing and creating such an interesting story to me. And I was so thrilled to see black people on screen and just this drama, right? And I was also like 10. And throughout the years when I was a teenager, I watched Tyler Perry and enjoyed his stuff. I watched Why Did I Get Married to the rest of the media compilations. I watched all these films. And there was a point in my life, I think mostly when I went to varsity and started understanding um, how cinema works, that the same thing I felt about, you know, white people and how they dominated cinema and how they represented black people, I started understanding why people were mad at Tyler Perry because at first I was like, what did he do? I was like, no, you're trying to bring down the black man. And then I, I kind of grew up and it wasn't even necessarily because of film. I think it was more because of I opened my eyes that I could see he is problematic. So Tyler Perry said he doesn't care about Rotten Tomato because these stories are for black people. He makes these stories for his people. Just tell you why. Tell you Please. Why. Because listen, man. I know that I'm telling stories that my folks want to see. I'm talking from our point of view. We're speaking a language. We're speaking a shorthand that we get. Now, the underlying thing is, as much as they black people, we mean black men. Black men like to see black women being punished. You may say it however you want, but that's the truth of it. Now, a lot of you might be like, why do you even bother? Don't watch these things. If it doesn't suit you, just move on. And I definitely agree. Here's the problem with that statement. I'm not saying because Tyler Perry is a black man with a black owned studio and stuff like that he has social responsibility for on like there must be pressure but he does and the problem is too many people don't <laughs> which is why it even becomes more disappointing when oppressed people also don't because it's like in order to get to the same point that modern Scorsese is at for example you have to be problematic a lot of male directors have problems with how they represent people in their films Quentin Tarantino and saying nigger for example Martin Scorsese and how women are used in his film for example and you've got Tyler Perry and how black women are used and how colorism is used should I rather say in the film it's so annoying <laughs> like in the beginning I would have forgiven it if he had learnt and I'm being serious the thing is we all used to think a particular way which is why we all used to enjoy the films except people who already understood that there was a problem with you know what he was doing my issue comes when he doesn't learn his lesson and still does the same shit. I thought Temptations was the worst film. Acrimony is the worst film I have ever seen from Tyler Perry. Like, a lot of people defend Acrimony. They're like, she was an angry person and he was trying to teach you that angry people, not women, angry people get punished for their anger. And some people are like, yeah, I know she deserved the money, but she divorced him. She never got to have a good time with this guy. 20 years of her life, she never got to enjoy life with this guy. Because of this guy, she couldn't have kids. And she didn't even get to enjoy that money. He's like, yeah, because you helped me. Making him look like he's a good guy. He's not a good guy. <laughs> no, he's not a good guy. As a person who's achieved so much in life through selfishness, let's not lie, because he he, he, take, he, he could create jobs, but instead he takes jobs away by doing everything himself, which is why his stuff is kind of shit. And as much as, you know, why did I get married? I think the first one is slightly more forgivable in my eyes. But I haven't watched it in a quite a long time, but it is slightly more forgivable because the characters kind of redeem themselves. It's the second one where things get a bit, you know, like Janet Jackson gets punished because she's having a fight with her husband who cheated on her sort of, and he gets killed and she suffers through it, for example. And then Sheila is also suffering with this guy who was her saving grace at some point, and 
now she's suffering and her ex-husband is dying from cancer and it's just a lot Tyler Perry's wife also a mess <laughs> and then obviously there's Marcus you know like she's also a mess everyone's a mess in the second one let's not lie um, as much as I may have enjoyed it when I was younger I'm looking at it now and I'm like messy because this is mostly when Tyler Perry started punishing women if he's making movies for an audience right when that audience says what you're making is problematic why does he not listen to that audience especially black women now i do understand a lot of the people who do watch his stuff are black women but which black women are they the the ones who are like patriarchy is the one and the rest of us to criticize because sometimes we sit there and we're like maybe tyler berry will change this time to be honest that's what i thought with acrimony i'm like maybe he'll change this time he did not change this time shut in five seconds i can see it's like a student film that thing the thing that disappoints me the most is that he didn't learn he never wants to learn and he never wants to listen right and i'd like to read an excerpt real real quick it's called bad Fem feminist by roxanne gay i picked it up during an exclusive book sale and i've not regretted it ever since the problem is that tyler perry is building his success on the backs of black women and the working class by using them all too often to teach his lessons to make his points or to make them the butt of his joke in many of Perry's movies, women are not to be trusted. Women are regularly punished in these films, whether by abuse, addiction, or adultery. While there are good women in these films, there are so many bad women, women who are unfulfilled by their lives or their marriages, and are then punished when they try to find fulfillment. An unspoken message all too often is, you should be grateful for what you've got. An example that she uses is Temptations, where the main character literally gets AIDS, loses her job, gets beaten to a pulp because her husband was boring her. What the fuck is that? If you're bored in your relationship and you no longer want to be in it, you have every right to go leave and do whatever the fuck you want. Yes, don't cheat. Even though technically she also points out, uh, Roxanne Gay that is, that the sex looked almost like rape. True. She has every right to sow her oats. Yes, don't cheat. But at the same time, if you cheat, you're probably not going to be punished with that much shit. HIV does not mean your life is over. You know what I mean? It does not mean that you ha you are at the bottom of life. It's it. It's all, no one wants you anymore. That's also problematic because we need to change the narrative of how we look at HIV, guys. Whew. And it's tiring to keep seeing this happen. You know, in um, Big Happy Family, the one sister is always just so angry and she's unfulfilled and you find out she had a kid early and she's ungrateful and she doesn't get to say bye to her mother because she's a bitch and then you've got the other sister who is unhappy and always shouting at her husband she never gets to be happy she's the sister who had to look after her mother and is angry at her other sister because it's just you know no woman was happy and you've got Bowie. she's an annoying baby mama because this guy's trying to look after his kid he's so great and he's just the innocent bystander and this woman is like i want more money you know come on guys you've got that what's this driver mad black woman wait let's not lie you kind of feel sorry for homeboy in a wheelchair after getting shot and you're like yo dog just forgive him you know it's not that bad and homegirl can't even be happy because she has to go back to a stupid ass ex-husband who has no one left to look after him his problem not anyone else's you've got the other movie where the other daughter was raped and her mother didn't care for her and they had a bad relationship and her life was sad and no one wanted to see her happy and she was alone until she had a man save her a light-skinned man and then you've got I can do bad all by myself where Taraji cannot has to look after her sister's kids because her mom's missing she hasn't seen her mother and her mother dies and it's sad again because she never got to say goodbye and she was the bad person who was looking after her damn self it is so tiring having to be told because you're a black woman to stop your life while other people I'm not saying that kids must be left on their own of course I'll take in my niece if I have to but I mean in the sense of if you don't take in a kid you're a terrible person and she had to be saved by you know a latina man because instead of this time you know he didn't use a dark skinned black man because people said no he was like okay i'll use a light skinned black man and then the latina man will save her do you want me to keep going about each and every one of these women who keep getting punished and tyler perry is always the good guy he's always the sweetheart he's always the saving fucking grace he's always the one who has been wronged his wife is the one who had a freaking her tubes tied because she didn't want kids and you would not listen to her and you wanted to force her to have kids because if she had kids eventually she'll be happy and she cheated on you of course what i wanted to say is that it sucks that the one person who's really producing a lot of black films is a problematic person but there's so many beautiful wholesome stories that used to be told back in the day 
for example girlfriends because my wife and kids and living singles yes they may have had things because it was back in the days but it's still a true story you know what i mean like jordan peele <laughs> doesn't disrespect women he doesn't even really disrespect white people <laughs> like but tyler perry is here producing and producing and producing like he's pumping out content but not for us it's for patriarchal men people like himself and women who love the patriarchy or think they love the patriarchy or stand by the patriarchy and yes he has an audience and if it's not broke don't fix it but this is very broke we have so little as black people especially in hollywood if so little and you tyler perry cannot even give us something worth it you have to be another problematic person and that is the most disappointing thing and yet the worst part is either you see it and you don't care or you don't see it because you don't care do you know what i mean like fine die were mad black women and then all the materials was made you know why did i get married were made fine but why did temptations and acrimony have to get made and it, i guess my disappointment is not it doesn't matter like it really doesn't matter i'm just a person and I, i'm not gonna watch any more of these stuff i'm really not like acrimony i watched again because it was made so quickly and i wanted to see what what maybe tyler perry changed i was like hopeful i was like maybe maybe this is the time maybe this is the moment he finally will grow he doesn't care and now he's a billionaire from it and it's also because y'all support him so there's also that and some of you don't even know what you're supporting and i'll forgive that it's the others who do the others who keep saying you know the ones who keep defending you know like ah tyler perry is just it's, it's a fun story yeah black man it's funny to you that the black woman's getting ha 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 okay what do you think we feel about seeing it every fucking day we already get punished for existing do we have to see it on our screens too shit man can we have some redemption and i don't mean the three good black women and i don't mean redemption by getting some good dick i mean actually have a real story you know can we have three dimensional characters why are the main women so weak where is the woman who has dimension she's multi dimensional you know she has she's multi faceted she's strong when she needs to be and she she has weaknesses she's a human she's vulnerable she's a person i don't get it <laughs> like i'm really trying to find a redeeming factor to shit he writes he could make amazing content why must we beg black men to just do better i just want to see women making their own stories because at this point i don't think y'all care <laughs> so it's fine i wish luck to every black woman and non-binary person out there who wants to write real stories and even to the men who want to write real stories where women are unpunished i wish you guys luck i really do because i believe that there are people out there who are doing so well and writing such beautiful stories about blackness in a way that has nothing to always do with suffrage but also knows how to balance reality within a beautiful story i believe that you guys are out there and even the moments when it is about suffrage i believe you're going to put some other things out there like just stop punishing black women unnecessarily in such drastic unnecessary ways while men get to just live life enjoy life life is great you just call the bad guy and then you forget about them but this woman gets aids yeah this is from a disappointed filmmaker on film friday let me know what you guys think what are your thoughts on tyler perry does he do it for you and is the reason because you're a man <laughs> okay okay bye guys Goodbye.